Hello again, and welcome to our next module here in our course. As you can see from the page here, what we're going to be talking about today is specifically uh, the moral evaluation of, of corporations and uh, GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, uh, as part of 21st century American agriculture. And now, obviously, unless you've been you know, living in a yurt on the back 40 uh, for the past few years, uh, you know that there's been a great deal of criticism of big business and of large corporations in American life uh, over the past three or four years. Um, so that's been uh, something that's been a broader uh, social movement uh, in the country today. Uh, and as a result, it's not surprising that uh, large agricultural corporations are being criticized as well. Uh, but along with that general critique of corporate power in America, there's also been, uh, in recent years, uh, perhaps stretching back a bit further, uh, a lot of criticism about the American food system. And we've been looking at, obviously, a fair bit of that here, uh, but also looking at uh, the impact on human health, which we're going to look at specifically in the next module. Um, and so these two kinds of uh, social movements, social critiques, uh, really kind of come together and in the past uh, three or four years have produced a very intense criticism uh, of a handful of large agricultural corporations in America. Uh, perhaps the most uh, prominent, the most uh, frequently attacked, is uh, the company Monsanto, uh, which produces uh, a large range of kind of high-tech agricultural products. Uh, but their flagship really has been uh, centered on the, the herbicide Roundup. Uh, Roundup is a very effective herbicide that kills all kinds of weeds, um, although there are increasing numbers of resistant weeds out there. Uh, but Roundup has been historically very effective in getting rid of weeds. Uh, and what Monsanto has done, in addition to producing Roundup, is that they've been able to produce uh, seeds of different crops, whether it's wheat or corn or soybeans, uh, which are resistant to this herbicide Roundup. Uh, and so a farmer can buy um, Roundup ready corn, uh, he can plant his field with that corn seed, uh, and then spray the entire field with Roundup even as the corn is growing, uh, and it won't kill the corn and it will just kill everything else. Uh, and Monsanto has taken that technology, that ability, uh, and really used it to gain a significant amount of power uh, in the 21st century American and 21st century global uh, food system. And so there's been a lot of criticism in recent years about Monsanto and its role uh, in, in food in the 21st century. Uh, and all of this ties together with the other things that we've been looking at so far in the class. Uh, this green revolution where we've seen uh, all of these things that we've talked about a number of times now. Uh, a move away from traditional uh, techniques, a move away from an emphasis on uh, manpower, and human laborers towards things like high-tech seeds, high-tech herbicides, uh, and a concentration of power, both in terms of a consolidation of farms into these larger and larger farms using all this machinery uh, and high-tech inputs. Uh, but also then there's been a similar consolidation in the other parts of the agricultural uh, system in terms of the companies supplying the seeds, uh, companies buying uh, the wheat and the corn produced by the farmers. So that there really are just uh, a handful of major players in these industries. People, corporations like Monsanto, but also uh, Cargill and others. Uh, and again, when you see the ads, and I'm going to ask you to look at uh, Monsanto's website uh, as part of your assignment for this module, uh, and you'll see that they make a, uh, a major point of playing up their connection with American family farmers. Now, obviously, some of that is just uh, nice PR. But to be honest, as Comkin explained in his book, family farmers still exist. And in fact, the majority of farms are still owned uh, by families. But of course, that's not really the whole picture, right? That there continue to be family farms, uh, but they function very differently than they did in the past. And essentially, what's happened is now that you have these corporate agribusinesses uh, that really kind of function on both ends of the spectrum. You just have this uh, family farmer who, of course, now 
farms the land that used to be farmed by 10 families. Uh, but now you still have this family farmer, but he's buying his seed every year from uh, a big agribusiness corporation like Monsanto. Uh, he's also buying a lot of fertilizer, a lot of herbicide, a lot of pesticide from them. Uh, and then he is selling it to another big agricultural uh, corporation, again, like Monsanto or maybe Cargill or some of these other corporations. And so uh, you're really getting a kind of shrinking of the middle where you have this American farm family, uh, but in a lot of ways uh, he ends up working for uh, basically these big corporate interests and just does the work of growing uh, the crops for them in essence. Uh, and so this uh, has raised all kinds of questions that I've mentioned, questions about uh, social justice, uh, questions about the impact on human health, which we'll look at next module, questions about the impact on uh, the environment and on the poor. Uh, so what I wanted to do here in this module uh, was to really focus specifically on this issue of Monsanto, uh, Corporation Monsanto, uh, and give you a kind of snapshot of this argument and allow you to uh, kind of see how it plays out for yourselves. So on the following pages, we're going to see uh, how Monsanto presents itself and their arguments for their role uh, in the 21st century food system. And then I'm also going to show you um, one of the prominent uh, critics of Monsanto uh, and her arguments against them. And then uh, we'll conclude with asking some uh, questions. And then I will look to see your responses to all of this on Blackboard. OK, so what I want to do on this page uh, is, uh, again, if you can look at the bottom of the page on the uh, right-hand side there on your monitor, you can see three large lines with uh, Monsanto's Food for Thought interview with Monsanto's CEO and then America's Farmers Webisodes. Uh, and if you put your cursor over those uh, lines of text, it should give you a link to the corresponding uh, web page, which should open up uh, in your browser. What I'd like you to do is to take a look at them, and you can look at them in that order. Uh, the little food for thought is just a short two or three minute um, uh, presentation put together Monsanto by Monsanto. Uh, to try to uh, lead you to think about uh, what it is that the uh, modern American food system provides, uh, in large part through Monsanto's efforts. Um, and then there's an interview uh, with the Monsanto CEO uh, with a reporter uh, talking about some of the criticisms. Now, I do have to say, watching this video, I was uh, I just couldn't help but laugh a few times. It's not exactly a hard-hitting piece of journalism. Uh, this is a uh, kind of industry reporter uh, who's asking some real softball questions uh, to this guy. Uh, but again, I think it does give you uh, a, a good uh, presentation of how Monsanto would argue for their role uh, in our food system today. And then the last bit uh, is a link to a promotional page that Monsanto has put together about America's farmers. Uh, and there's a whole list of, of webisodes. These are just two or three minute uh, little video montages about American farming. I think there's 20 or so of them. Now, you certainly don't need to uh, watch all of them, but just go through it and click on a few, I think, to get a sense of um, what, they're, what they're arguing uh, there. And again, uh, I'd like you to look at all of these things and, of course, think about them uh, critically. Uh, and I certainly don't want to claim that there aren't any valid points being made here. Uh, and we can talk at the end of the module uh, about some questions we might ask or points to consider when looking at Monsanto and its arguments. Um, but again, I want you to uh, be looking at this with the things that we've been looking at so far in the course uh, in mind. Uh, and there is no doubt that Monsanto does some impressive things and has uh, developed a lot of new products. Uh, but there are a lot of questions that we could ask about all this as well in terms of whether or not all of this is a good thing, whether or not there are other ways that we can produce our food um, that are all, I think, worth um, raising and talking about. But for now, uh, just take a look at Monsanto's arguments for yourself. Uh, and then on the next page, we'll go ahead and look at their critics. Oh, and by the way, uh, in case you're confused, uh, as I was when I watched the the CEO clip. Uh, his name is Hugh Grant, 
uh, which I was a little surprised at first. I was wondering why a uh, romantic comedy actor was uh, being a spokesperson for Monsanto, but it turns out uh, this Hugh Grant is is not uh, the Hugh Grant of, of the romantic comedies that you might enjoy. He's the, the CEO of Monsanto. Uh, but anyways, uh, take a look at them, and then on the next page we will see a completely opposite perspective from one of Monsanto's critics. Okay, so you've just hopefully finished watching uh, Monsanto's promotional uh, videos. Uh, you've heard the basic argument that uh, Monsanto has made all of the dramatic developments and discoveries which have allowed uh, yields to be increased dramatically over the last 50 years and are going to be necessary to increase yields in the coming 20 years in order to feed the world. Uh, and basically arguing that um, what they are doing has been both beneficial uh, and is in fact absolutely necessary to avoid mass starvation in the future. Uh, and uh, I especially like the little exchange where of course uh, the CEO says, oh, we were happy to, to live alongside of organic agriculture. Um, there's room enough for plenty, for, for all of us uh, in the industry, which is all of course very, um, very kind of him. Uh, when in fact it's not much of a uh, concession given the relative power of Monsanto versus small organic farmers in the American uh, food system. Uh, and so you can see uh, the Monsanto image it would present as being one of simply a hardworking company looking to feed the world um, and really just providing a product that people are free to take or not, uh, depending on whether or not they think it's going to be good for them. Uh, obviously, there's a very different uh, view of Monsanto out there as well. Uh, uh, and Madonna Shiva is one of the most prominent critics of Monsanto. She's an Indian uh, scientist who has written a number of books, uh, speaks a lot about uh, agricultural issues, uh, and is a very prominent critic of Western agricultural uh, corporations and what they've done in India, but also in other parts of the world, uh, where they've come in with the Green Revolution and the machinery and the chemicals, uh, uh, the new uh, strands of all the crops, and have basically pushed aside the traditional agricultural methods and introduced uh, 21st century American agriculture in these other parts of the world. Uh, and she argues that the results have basically been a uh, disaster. Uh, and so I'm going to give you a link here again on the bottom right of the page, you can get a link to three uh, segments of an interview that she did uh, going through some of these issues, and you can hear uh, basically what she argues there from her own uh, mouth. Uh, another uh, video that you might be interested in looking at is, if this is a topic that catches your interest, uh, is the movie Food Inc., which many of you may have already seen. If not, I, I would recommend it. Uh, and there, you'll hear many of these uh, same arguments developed in a little more uh, length. Uh, and basically, uh, uh, Shiva and these other critics uh, paint a very different picture of Monsanto. It's not simply uh, a hardworking, ingenious company providing products that people can take or leave. It's in fact a company uh, with immense wealth and power that uses that wealth and power to shape government policies uh, in order to give them uh, basically the ability to force uh, their will onto the world market. Uh, it also argues that uh, what happens with the introduction of these, of these modern uh, wonder crops that Monsanto offers is that uh, once you suck in these small farmers, whether they're in the U.S. or in India, uh, is once they begin doing this, uh, they essentially become trapped. Uh, it's the agricultural equivalent of crack that you uh, get people hooked on these hybrids and they have to borrow a lot of money to buy the seed, the fertilizer, the chemicals, uh, so that it ends up, uh, instead of being uh, small independent farmers, they end up caught up in this system where they are constantly taking loans to buy the inputs for next year. Uh, and they might produce marginally more uh, saleable commodity crops, uh, but all of the money they make from that has to be used by the inputs uh, for the next year. Uh, and then, of course, along with this, uh, she and other critics raised many questions about 
the impact on the environment, uh, and the impact on human health uh, from all of these products. So I'll let you uh, listen to her and her arguments um, and consider them and weigh them over and against Monsanto's. Uh, and then on the next page, once you finish that, we can uh, wrap this up with some questions to think about and then to discuss on Blackboard. We've heard two very different perspectives on the role of Monsanto in 21st century American and global uh, agriculture. On the one hand, Monsanto presents itself as a substandard innovative company that has uh, allowed farmers to be staggeringly productive, fed the world, and we absolutely will need them to feed the world uh, as it grows in population in the future. On the other hand, we've heard Monsanto described as uh, essentially the devil, uh, which is aiming to gain control of the world food supply in order to ensure its profits, uh, and in the process is endangering the environment, uh, ruining small farmers in the U.S. and elsewhere in the world, uh, and probably damaging our health through the introduction of untested genetically modified organisms. So what exactly are we supposed to conclude from all of this? Um, is it the devil? Is Monsanto the devil? Or are they in fact uh, saviors that are going to save the world from starvation? Uh, and again, this is a big ongoing debate and there's a lot to explore here if you're interested in this topic. Um, from my own perspective, given the uh, array of criticisms made against Monsanto, uh, it certainly seems plausible that there is at least some abuse of their power going on. Uh, there simply are so many uh, criticisms from so many different sectors. Uh, it seems unlikely that all of this is simply being uh, made up. And particularly if you look at the relationships between Monsanto executives and government regulatory agencies, uh, there definitely seems to be a lot of uh, commingling, if you will, between the two. Now again, this is something we've talked about in general, uh, that government and science uh, tend to support uh, the industry and vice versa. Uh, and so it shouldn't be surprising that we see this happening. But uh, again, this raises uh, the real possibility of, of corruption or at least abuse of power, uh, which certainly seems possible in this situation. We don't really have the time uh, necessary to go into looking at all of these different allegations. Uh, what I would focus on instead, maybe for our purposes in this class, uh, is to ask uh, a more hypothetical question, and that is, um, even if Monsanto were behaving in a perfectly proper manner, uh, there was no uh, abuse of power going on, no coercion, uh, they were doing everything exactly as they uh, presented on their PR pages, um, would it still be morally problematic? Uh, would there be a problem with a company like Monsanto just given its very nature? And this, I think, is a, uh, a valid question to raise given uh, Catholic social teaching, given the principles that we've been looking at in the class. Uh, for example, the idea of subsidiarity, that decisions and power ought to be located on the smallest, most local level possible. Uh, there seems to be uh, an inherent conflict between that idea, that principle, and the idea of one company wielding this kind of power uh, over the global food system. Um, there just seems to be too much opportunity there uh, for, even if not outright abuse of power, then certainly treating uh, people as statistics and numbers instead of treating them as human persons with an inherent dignity uh, and value. The same, I think, is true when we look at stewardship, um, again, big companies aren't necessarily out to destroy the planet, uh, but there's only so much one can pay close attention to. Uh, and having, again, this kind of concentration of power, I think, would raise questions about whether or not it's possible to really be good stewards uh, of so many different uh, products, so many different um, organisms, so many different areas uh, where Monsanto is essentially uh, controlling the agricultural process. Uh, and then there's also the question of participation. Uh, and one of the issues uh, that is raised by the critics, uh, and when you look at uh, Monsanto's PR pages, uh, they respond to this, um, 
the issue of genetically modified organisms, where they produce uh, these uh, organisms that are Roundup ready or what have you. Uh, but Monsanto has vigorously resisted uh, labeling uh, products uh, if they are made from, from these strands of uh, corn or wheat or whatever it might be. Uh, and their argument is, well, there's no, there's no compelling reason that we have to label genetically modified organisms. But again, I think this raises an important issue of participation. Uh, is ought, Shouldn't individuals be able to make choices about whether or not they want to eat this or not? Uh, Monsanto scientists may assure us that there's nothing wrong with these products, uh, but still, from a Catholic social uh, teaching principle perspective, uh, people should have the right to make uh, decisions about their lives uh, and about whether or not they want to eat uh, these products. So I think that raises um, some very significant questions about whether or not real participation is possible uh, with this type of company producing uh, these types of products. Um, now, having said all this, it might uh, be very nice and convenient to just say, oh, well, look, Monsanto is this bad, bad company, uh, and we need to do something about them, we need to regulate them. Uh, now, what we would possibly do about this corporation uh, is a difficult question to answer given the apparent inability of the government to uh, deal with the corporations that uh, everyone knows are abusing their power, for example, in the financial industry. Uh, we have a huge financial collapse, uh, and basically nothing has happened to the companies uh, which essentially engineered it. Uh, so the question of abuse is, uh, yes, something should be done, but it doesn't seem promising that that's going to happen. Uh, the other question then uh, is, to what extent is it fair to uh, focus on Monsanto uh, as opposed to uh, America as a whole, including ourselves? Uh, and when we, we look at what Monsanto does, how it promotes its products, uh, what its goals are, increased yields, increased profits, not really paying attention to the other issues like the fates of small farmers or uh, impact on the environment or possible long-term impacts on health. Our focus is on this year's yields or this year's profit numbers. In many ways, this is just an expression of uh, the American lifestyle in the 21st century, uh, where we've chosen to focus on uh, profits and short-term pleasure over and against uh, the principles of, of Catholic social teaching, over and against the basic goods that natural law would tell us are most important. Uh, and so yes, it would be easy for many of us to look at Monsanto and say, uh, Monsanto's the devil, they're doing all these terrible things. And I think a fair bit of that might be true. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Monsanto is just perhaps the clearest representation in the agricultural world of a general American cultural choice uh, to pursue profit, to pursue short-term pleasure at the expense of these other uh, less definable, but ultimately more important goods. Uh, but again, that is clearly uh, my position. But now that you've seen Monsanto's arguments, you've seen arguments from one of their primary critics, uh, what I'd like you to do then is to uh, come onto Blackboard and we can discuss, uh, you can discuss uh, what your take on all of this is.